Believe it or not, this floor that I'm standing on right now has been wet for about a thousand years and it was designed to be that way. We're in St Mullins, County Carlow, next to the mighty Barrow, the second longest of Ireland's many rivers. The saint who lived here in the 7th century, St Mulling, was intimately associated with the waterways here. And the same is true of the pilgrims who have made their way here in the centuries ever since. In prose and poetry about St Mulling, we hear of him drinking from the river Barrow, losing a book in the river and miraculously finding it unharmed later. And we hear of him constructing an artificial watercourse off the river to flow through the monastic site here, this course known as the Thalju. That stream has since dried up. The water flowing through here though is from another artificial channel called the Thakarda. In poems attributed to St Mulling, he refers to this stream as my Thakarda and he associates it spiritually with the River Jordan. He speaks of the spiritual communion with God that will be given to people through this flowing water. Now that might sound very esoteric, but it actually seems to be a fairly straightforward reference to the sacrament of baptism. That's what makes sense, for example, of the reference to the Jordan where Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. And scholars think that in fact for about the first 500 years or so, baptism in Ireland took place in rivers and wells rather than in the interior of church buildings. We know this in part because some churchmen in the 12th century were promoting baptism in indoor fonts and this was presented as a change from previous practice and a way to bring Ireland more in line with continental practice. This building represents an in-between phase of that development. It's a very, very old structure, possibly up to a thousand years old. It looks like a church, but only superficially. Look at the east end. That's where the altar would be in a church, but instead you find this double stream through spouts that are part of the original structure. And if you look at the floor, you'll see that from the beginning, it was paved with stone. And that's true of almost no churches in Ireland at the time. This structure was designed to have water flowing through it. And so it was almost certainly a standalone baptistry, the only surviving one of its kind in Ireland. It integrated old and new, making use of this stream associated with St Mulling, flowing off the mighty barrow, but providing an appropriately dignified space for the liturgy of baptism. This is where local children were baptized right up until the 19th century. But even apart from baptisms, pilgrimage to this place has always been a watery affair. Pilgrims here would wade in the water as part of their prayer, renewing the grace of baptism by their repentance, as we do when we bless ourselves with holy water, for example. In the 12th century, pilgrims are described coming here from all the parts of Ireland to wade in the waters. And even then, it's described as an ancient practice. When the Black Death hit Ireland in the 14th century, many people washed themselves here in St Mullins in a spirit of prayer and repentance. Bishops, nobles, ordinary people. And pilgrims today do just the same, wading through the thacker that carved out by St Mulling, immersing themselves in Carlos Jordan.